The Paramount Theatre Birmingham opened on September the 4th, 1937, with 2,600 seats. Narrow entrance fronts often occur when cinemas are built on expensive city centre sites, and all that could be seen were the main entrance doors at ground level, and a canopy extending over the pavement, with nothing but an architectural feature above, on which was the illuminated name of the theatre. Above the large ornamental canopy were a trio of ornamental pillars topped by the Paramount, and later the Odeon, sign. The facade used to have 2,500 feet of neon tubing and required 50 transformers. Planned on similar lines to the other provincial Paramount theatres, the Birmingham Paramount too was built from the designs of Verity and Beverly. A decorative feature of the Grand Foyer used to be the elaborate fibrous plaster ceiling, decorated in golden yellows, picked out in silver. The walls were decorated with pink, tinted and figured mirrors, relieved by decorative plaster panels. Illumination was provided by fibrous plaster lighting fittings. The interior had been planned in a restrained modern style, which combined intimacy with dignity. Until very recently, the interior presented largely the appearance it did in 1937. A drastic redecoration in the late 60s, the so-called Zing treatment, deprived it of the architectural effects on the anti-proscenium walls, as this area was covered with curtaining. But a number of original light fittings remained, and the cove lighting above the circle was still intact. The proscenium surround used to be formed by a rich fibrous plaster grille, which had an illuminated band on its leading edge. The anti-proscenium walls were moulded in fibrous plaster. Along the side walls were pilasters decorated with gold leaf and painted ornamental enrichments. The ceiling was broken by elaborate concealed lighting troughs, the huge main ceiling bay having a beautiful ornamental painted surround. Behind the stage were 12 dressing rooms capable of providing adequate accommodation for a company of 50 artists. On the left-hand side of the former orchestra pit was the console of the four-manual ten-rank Compton organ on a semi-revolving lift. The organ was originally fitted with Compton's patent electronic unit, the Mellotone. The two organ chambers were behind the curtaining on the left of the proscenium and it was also amplified on the right-hand side to give a fuller sound. Al Bollington was the first organist, and Charles Smitten, the last resident full-time organist in 1951. When the theatre was given the Zing treatment in the late 60s, the orchestra pit was done away with, and the organ console buried under a carpet slope that went straight from the stall's floor to stage level. Stage draperies included festooned front tableau curtains and pelmet, four complete sets of stage settings, each in gold satin, silver satin, black velour and peach velour. Stage lighting consisted of footlights, four battens, twelve floods, ten spots and four optical effect lanterns. The projection suite was on the roof above the circle. Original equipment consisted of simplex projectors, a slide lantern and four Stelmar spotlights. Western Electric Mirophonic Sound had been installed. Rank discontinued live concerts on July the 2nd, 1987, and this led to the pessimistic impression that a run-down procedure had started. Angry pop fans protested at the termination of live shows. When live concerts were discontinued, the Odeon returned to being a full-time cinema, and Steve Tovey played the Compton organ as part of the normal film program. This made it the only Odeon theatre where an organ interlude was still to be experienced. This too has now ceased, as in November 1988, the pessimistic impressions were confirmed, and the theatre is closed and is being converted into an eight-screen complex.